Welcome to the Real Life English Podcast, where we help dedicated English learners just like you cultivate the courage, the confidence, and the skills that you need to understand real life native English, to communicate clearly with people from all around the world, and to make your life an epic global adventure. Now, are you ready to go beyond the classroom and start living your English? Can I get an aww yeah? This week, we're teaching you words that natives use instead of stupid. We're not encouraging you to start insulting people. However, if you learn this vocabulary that Ethan and I discuss in this week's podcast, then you're going to start understanding TV series, movies, the news, Twitter, presidential debates, and much more. So you'll be learning lots of American and British English vocabulary as well as phrases. And also, if you head on over to our Instagram at reallife.english, you'll have some bonus vocabulary there. So make sure you check it out after listening to this podcast. Ah, uh, yeah, boys and girls, citizens of the world, this is Ethan from Real Life English, where we believe that listening to podcasts is a fun natural, convenient, and incredible way to learn English. So download this podcast and listen to it while you're stuck in traffic, singing in the shower, or even driving in your car to the supermarket. Oh uh, yeah, I'm here in the Barcelona studio. Well, the not so physical Barcelona studio, as always by the lovely Andrea. How's it going, Andrea? I'm great, thank you. It's a little bit cloudy today, which uh, we're not so used to these days, but I'm, I'm great. If you're, if you're watching this actually on YouTube, then you'll probably see that maybe it's a little bit gray. It's a little bit grayer, which isn't so common in Barcelona. I think both of us live here because we love the sunny weather and we have very few days like this in the year. Exactly. Yeah. So when it happens for us, we're a bit disappointed, but it's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> not quite as bad as London, right? Definitely not, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that said, today we are talking about a pretty fun topic and... We don't want you to think that we're trying to promote that you're going out there and like starting to call people stupid or idiot or other words like this. But really, this is a topic that you will find very practical, actually, because uh, from watching TV series to watching the presidential debate, or even if you follow President Trump on Twitter, you'll probably see a lot of these words used. And, and we were just talking about this beforehand that uh, in pop culture, you'll hear it all the time. If you're with friends, maybe you'll use some of them in kind of a joking way. And so we're going to cover everything from like what you might hear in the media that would be more formal to things that you could kind of use in a joking, fun way with your friends if you have like a lot of uh, a close relationship with them. Exactly. I definitely think this is a really useful podcast because you're going to understand natives so much better. So it's not necessarily that you have to start using these words, but I mean, if you're with your friends, you might use some of them, but it's more just to really help your understanding. Exactly. And that really is real life English. So we want to prepare you for how English is spoken in the real world. And of course, even insults are important in the real world. So that said... Before we get into all of the fun that goes along with these different words, uh, we're going to give a shout out to a very special listener out there. So today's shout out comes from Canada and it comes from Dr. HVS Aurora. And it's a five star review that says, thanks a ton. My God, why didn't I get to know you before? Thanks for making my English better than ever before. I'm improving. Cheers to you guys. Oh uh, yeah. Thank you so much, doctor. <laughs> that is really fantastic to hear that your English is better than ever before with us. Hopefully after this episode, if you're listening, it will be even better. Yes, for sure. So if you want us to shout you out, it's really simple. You just have to head over to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you're listening to us from and leave us a five-star review. And the really fantastic thing is that when you do this, you're helping other learners from around the world to also have a ton of fun learning with us and to make their English better than ever. So that said, we have a fantastic quote for you. So today's quote is by Galileo Galilei, and it is... I never met a man so ignorant that I couldn't learn something from him. I think that's very relevant to today's podcast because <laughs> even when you think maybe someone is stupid or you can't really understand how they possibly think that way, I love this quote because it kind of like reminds me that when you meet someone new, there's always something that they know that you don't know, even if it seems like that person maybe isn't very smart or they have very different beliefs from you. 
they're definitely going to be an expert at something. I completely agree. And also you could also learn certain things like you might learn more about yourself and you might also learn maybe how not to do things or, you know, how not to be in a certain situation. So for sure, you'll always learn something. Yeah. And I think definitely that's a, that's a really good point. Like you can learn what not to do from other people's mistakes or shortcomings. But um, yeah, I think that it's really great because during this time, uh, for example, the United States, where we have so much conflict and polarization surrounding the elections, very different political opinions, which we did another podcast on. So you definitely should go listen to that if you're interested in hearing a little bit more about our opinions surrounding the American politics. But I think right now it's really important to kind of like have that empathy to be able to try at least to see the other person's point of view, to maybe see where they're coming from, because even if it seems absurd to you, maybe that someone could possibly vote for that other person or could possibly have those other beliefs, you have to see that, you know, maybe they're coming from a different worldview and they have kind of different values. And I think if you can understand that, even if you don't agree with it, it's going to kind of help you to develop as a person. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. It's just about understanding each other and like what you said, having empathy and just if you try to do that, then you're not being ignorant, you know, you're trying to see the other other view. And like you said earlier as well, you might learn something. So it's really important to have an open mind and you don't have to agree with it, but you can at least try to understand it. Yeah. The thing I always like to think about is probably if you grew up in the same circumstances as that person, you would have the same beliefs. So, you know, it's just by pure coincidence, even if you are right, even if your values are better or whatever the case is, it's really just pure coincidence probably that you were fortunate enough to kind of like grow up with those beliefs or to have had the education that you have that kind of like gave you those beliefs. So I think it's always good just to maybe be able to see where the other person came from and maybe if you know, they didn't have those same opportunities as you. Maybe there's a certain way that you can have empathy there, like we said. So that's it. I think that that's a kind of a great mindset to roll into today's main topic, which is maybe not quite so empathetic. All right, so we will start first with some words that they mean like stupid and they would be somewhat insulting, but they're very, very soft. So you'll hear these even, I think, in formal situations. If you're reading the newspaper, if you're watching the news, they might use these to kind of say in a way that's not nice, but, you know, not quite as belittling or insulting that someone maybe wasn't thinking so much. Definitely. I think these are a bit more formal and, but I mean, they're still to the point, but they're not quite as rude as some of the others, maybe. <laughs> exactly. So the first one we have is short-sighted. So what does this mean exactly? Do you know like the etymology behind that? Yeah, so if you are actually short-sighted, it's usually to do with your sight. So if you're someone that mm -hmm. wears glasses and maybe you can't see very far, you can only see close up, you would be described as short-sighted. But you can also use it to talk about someone that maybe is not being very smart in that moment because mm -hmm. if you're short-sighted, then you're not really looking at the long term. You're not like looking maybe even at the global picture. You're just very much looking at the short term, right? Exactly. And I think it's maybe not so smart from that point of view. If you're not planning for the long term or for the consequences that could come from your actions right now, then basically you're, you're short-sighted. You're not really thinking about it. So that's something that I think you could hear all the time. Like someone could say that the president or some politician made some short-sighted decision or, you know, any sort of like article or anything that you'll read. This one could be quite common, right? Definitely. Like even one that comes to mind for me as well is like Brexit. I think so <laughs> many people when they were voting for Brexit, they were so short-sighted mm -hmm. because they didn't really realize how it was going to affect the country and individuals as well. And many people see that now and maybe would vote differently, but you know, it's too late now, but definitely they were short-sighted. That's a perfect example. So yeah. another way that you might hear someone say this would be the one that we used in the quote, we said ignorant or another very similar word is naive. Yeah. So if someone is ignorant, like we explained a little bit earlier, they're just not listening or seeing the other side, they don't want to, maybe they don't know about it, but that's just the same. If you're not trying to learn about it, then you're still ignorant. And exactly. 
And then naive, like you tend to think of a child maybe being quite naive because they haven't had Mm -hmm. so much life experience. And so when they're making decisions, it's based on their limited experience. And, you know, maybe they can be a bit naive in that sense that they're not really making an informed decision on something. Yeah. It's a word that's very similar to when, if you say someone is innocent, like they don't really have that, that life experience and stuff, but we use it usually to say that someone maybe wasn't so smart or they're not so smart because of that lack of experience, right? Exactly. So another one, I think it's quite formal would be like unintelligent. It means like intelligent means you're smart. So it's the opposite of that, right? Yeah. This one's nice and simple. It's, you know, just the opposite of intelligent. So you'll probably, you'll probably hear this as well. It's definitely a more formal one, a more proper one to say rather than being (laughs) too, too rude, but it is still, obviously, if you're calling someone intelligent, it can still be quite insulting. Definitely. And finally, this one, maybe it's, it's start, it's a good transition into the next level or something, but it's dense. Yeah. (laughs) So if someone's dense it means well we would actually in the uk we would say thick rather Uh, than dense yeah yeah but it means the same thing right exactly so actually in the u.s we do something similar like thick-headed which i think is almost like i think that maybe like your skull is so thick that like things just aren't going in like you're not hearing the other person or you're you're ignorant right exactly so that's what i imagine the same with dense like you would imagine that there's not much space for things to go through and for you to compute them (laughs) or understand them. And that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. It almost maybe has a certain stubbornness to it as well, like that you maybe have a certain sense of pride or something. So you don't want to change your opinion, not because even, even though like you recognize the other person's right, you just have like that pride, that arrogance or that stubbornness that is keeping you from changing your, your opinion. So you're like being dense in that moment. Mm. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So that said, those are all the formal ones. So we're going to take it to the next level. So ones that they're not formal, certainly, but they're not super informal either. You could probably still hear some of these on the news or in different sort of like media and things like that. So kind of like we were talking about dense that you're saying maybe like someone has a thick skull or something like that. I think a lot of these different expressions have to do with something about your head or your brain or your mind. So you'll kind of hear this theme. So on this kind of like level of things that are not so formal, not so informal, we have first off that someone is brainless, mindless, or empty headed, which all mean kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. So before we were talking about dense, like maybe when there's just not enough room for movement and like new information in there, but then you can also think like when you think of someone that's stupid, you maybe think of them being mindless or not having much in there in reference to their Mm -hmm. brain, I suppose. (laughs) Yeah, that's definitely a perfect description. And kind of like similar to that, we'll say maybe that someone is like slow Or we have other ways that we'll say this is like slow-witted or then with like the witted, wit comes from cleverness, right? Yeah. Being smart, having wit. Yeah, exactly. So we'll say someone is slow, slow slow-witted or half-witted, or we call that person a half-wit. Okay. Yeah. Would you use all these? Um, We would say slow. I'm not sure about Mm slow-witted and half-witted. I haven't really heard those as much in the UK. Maybe there are some alternatives that we would use. Um, But obviously I've heard of them, but I don't think they're used as much maybe. That surprises me because I always think like one of the stereotypes that we have of Brits is that they have a witty sense of humor. Yeah. And so I thought wit naturally was like a word that you would use a lot. Yeah, wit we do. Like I, maybe mm-hmm. I, I suppose we use it more to say when someone is witty or they have a witty sense of humor and things like that. And maybe we tend to use it less to describe them if they are not that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that this is definitely a really good one, at least in the US, that slow witted, like you definitely, I think could hear this in situations maybe where someone's not wanting to be so to the point, but it's definitely not a compliment by any means. Mm-hmm. So, so far we have kind of things like not having a brain, being a little bit slow. We could also say that you're foolish or you're a fool. Or in the US, I think you could even hear this wouldn't, this would be more informal, but if you say like someone's a damn fool. Oh, wow. Really emphasizing 
Is that for emphasis? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I suppose we would say bloody. <laughs> Definitely. He's a bloody fool. <laughs> a bloody fool. Yeah, we would use this as well <laughs> in the UK. And especially like when you want to tell someone maybe that their behavior hasn't quite been correct, you might say, you were so foolish. What were you thinking? Hmm. Does it come from, I'm not sure exactly, is it some sort of performer? Yeah, isn't it? Or have I made that up? Isn't a fool the same as a jester? Yeah, that's what it makes me think of. Yeah, a jester. What's a jester exactly? A jester is like what the kings and queens used to have. I think. I guess it's also like a joker. Like when you play, we were actually talking earlier today about poker. So when you play poker, there's like a card that a lot of times is used as a wild card called the joker. Uh, and that comes from the same kind of character, right? So it's like a sort of like a comedian, someone to do like silly things or, or make jokes for, for example, the king or queen. So this person could also be called like the fool. And from that, that person maybe is a little bit like a clown. So from that, I guess we got it for like a person who's not so smart. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's where it comes from as well. You can just picture it as well, can't you? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So another one, which is maybe kind of similar, I think, to saying someone is slow, you might say that they're not so bright or they're dull, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we would, we would say the same. We would say they're not very bright. And I suppose you could say they're a bit dull. Um, we have an expression as well, actually, with dull. Dull as, dish, dull as dishwater. Have you heard that one? Dull as dishwater. Yeah. Is dishwater very dull? Yeah, because I suppose like, <laughs> you know, if you if you fill up your sink with the water and you're cleaning the dishes mm -hmm. and then it starts to get murky and dirty and it's very dull. I think that's where that one comes from. All very good words there. Murky. Murky you can't use as an insult, but like thinking about dishwater, that's a, a good adjective to use. Yeah, so if something's murky, it's not clear, it's not very clean. You can't really see mm -hmm. see through it well. Murky waters. Exactly. So that's another really great one to use as an insult as well, saying, so you'd say like dull is dishwater is an insult as well. Yeah, you might not say it to the person, but maybe if you're talking about them to someone, you might describe them this way, <laughs> but you could say it to the person as well. Yeah, well, you're a bit dull as dishwater. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great one. I'm going to start using that. So similarly to some of these ones, we, we said there's a lot with like your head or your mind. We have simple-minded yeah so again you could even just say simple a little bit as well couldn't you a little bit simple and mm -hmm. it's kind of saying again a little bit brainless a little bit slow very similar to that one and then the last two we have i don't know if they're like very american or if you would use these uh we have gullible we say someone is gullible and i remember when i was younger people would say hey look gullible is written on the ceiling to see if you would look up and this is like when you're a kid and you don't know what gullible means. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, wow. That's really mean. Yeah, I can imagine kids doing that at school. Um, yeah, we use gullible as well. So it just means that you believe things very easily, doesn't it? Exactly. So it's not necessarily like stupid. It's just like you're easily convinced of things. So this might be, I mean, I guess it could be kind of maybe someone is stupid because they're not thinking so much about what you're telling them. Uh, but this is someone, you know, who you could say, for example, that, you know, they found a, a UFO in Barcelona yesterday and the person would say, really, you know, instead of being like, no, that's <laughs> yeah. nonsense. You're, you're making that up. Yeah. It's quite a similar one to naive as well, mm -hmm. a little bit, isn't it? It can be certainly. Yeah. So you yeah. don't want to be gullible. <laughs> that's certainly, uh, that certainly won't really help you in life if you're too gullible. Definitely. Yeah. And talking about elections and things like that as well it's really important to not be gullible during uh, important decisions like this as well totally so the last one this one to me sounds very american but you can tell me if you would use it klutz yeah that's really american <laughs> it's really american yeah. so we'd say this like usually i think like someone who's really clumsy like they're um a more formal way to say it might be like maladroit Oh, I haven't heard that one. Is that a new one for you? Yeah. That comes from French, so it's like a super formal word in English, of course. Oh. Um, what does clumsy mean? Yeah, so if you're clumsy, it means that you, like for example, you trip up easily, like you might drop things easily. So you tend to be clumsy, like you're just not careful with things. And, and lots of people, I think, even call themselves clumsy. Like when these things happen, they're like, oh gosh, I'm so clumsy. And 
they kind of just accept it maybe and walk into doors and all these sorts of things. Yeah. So if someone does something like that, that probably doesn't seem like the smartest thing. So I might say, you klutz, like you're just saying that kind of like, you know, you did something really stupid and maybe not so uh, kind of meaning that, that you're not really in control of your body so much. Yeah, I've definitely heard this, so I do know it, but it is a really American one. Would, is there anything similar that you would use in the UK? Mm, I suppose one would be like a numpty, maybe, like... A numpty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're such a numpty. Like, if you keep <laughs> doing things like that, like if you're maybe a bit clumsy, you could also maybe use Muppet, like, oh, stop it, you Muppet. <laughs> or something just if someone's a bit clumsy you might use that one as well that was one of those american words that you shouldn't use in the uk right from that podcast we did yeah you need to use it with caution because obviously we all know who the muppets are like kermit the frog and miss piggy <laughs> but we do use it it's a slang term in the uk yeah to call someone mm -hmm. an idiot or someone that's being a bit silly or clumsy and things like that fantastic I definitely think that uh, the the Muppets definitely seem like klutzes, so yeah. that could be a very fitting one. So we also have the word imbecile, which I think that also could sound quite quite formal maybe. It sounds like a little bit older to me. Yeah, it's definitely a more formal one, and I think it is really rude as well. Like if you're calling someone mm -hmm. an imbecile, you're like saying that they are really, really stupid. <laughs> Yeah, not the not the kindest word to say to someone, but you could hear it. You might even hear it right now with the debates or with some things surrounding the elections in the U.S. Uh, or maybe you could hear it in Parliament if you're watching some debate in Parliament. Maybe if someone gets really heated in the moment, any politician might lose their temper and say a word like that. It's definitely possible, yeah. What does it mean to lose your temper? If you lose your temper, it means that you get angry easily. Exactly. So a lot of these words you might say to someone, if you lose your temper, you get really angry, you can't understand how they can possibly think how they think, or how they could have done something so stupid, then you might say, you imbecile, how could you do that? Exactly. Wouldn't it be great if there was some way to understand real English without getting lost and without getting bored? Well, now there is. With our real life native immersion course, we will take you on a 41 week real life adventure of the English language. Each week exploring a different topic connected to our goal to help you understand and use real native English and make it a permanent part of your life in a way that is fun, natural, and convenient. The best part is you can try it for free with our three part power learning series. We will send it to your email. Just go to reallifeglobal.com slash pod, that's P-O-D, to sign up. Now, let's get back to today's podcast lesson. All right, so now we're going to move into some more fun ones, I think. These are the ones that are more informal. They're the ones that probably we use more with our friends, with our close friends, of course, or I probably, when I was younger, would use a lot of these with my brother, for example, because we <laughs> bickered all the time. Yeah, I can definitely imagine that. And yeah, the same with us. We would use them with our friends and just with really close family, brothers and sisters. Definitely. And I think you'll encounter a lot of these if you're watching a TV series or a movie or you're in the United States or the UK. Yeah, because I'm sure the ones that I know that you will tell us that are more American, maybe I've heard them mm -hmm. from watching TV series and movies, not necessarily because we use them in the UK. Definitely. I think I can't say the same maybe so much. There is definitely some of these ones that we had from the UK on this list, which you guys will learn in a little bit. Uh, they're new for me. So that said, we had, of course, like the word already from this podcast, stupid. That's like a pretty informal one. And it's one that we'll use all the time. Or I think very similarly, idiot or saying someone is idiotic. They're doing something idiotic or they're acting idiotic. Yeah. And we have a lot, I think, in the UK, we have a lot of versions of saying this as well. So what might you say to your to your sister when you were younger and you were getting mad because she was doing something stupid? So maybe one that's not too harsh, I think, is a wally. You might call someone a wally. Wally. Yeah. <laughs> so would you use that as an adjective or as a noun? You would use it as a noun, yeah. So you would... Okay, so you'd call that person mm -hmm. a wally. Yeah. So stop being a wally or you'd say, oh, you're such a wally. <laughs> yeah. 
That's great. So I think this word we kind of talked about when we were talking about like words with babies that are kind of like different in the US and the UK, right? Um, and one of them was like a, a dummy. So would you use that as an insult in the UK? No, not really. We wouldn't. So in the US, we'd use that one a lot too. And I, th I think especially mm. like maybe if you're a kid, you call someone like a big dummy, you're being a dummy. So like yeah. probably the same as like Wally. Um, or we might say dum dum or just the word dumb. Okay. Yeah, like uh, like in the UK, we would say maybe that someone was dumb for sure, mm -hmm. but we wouldn't use dummy or dum dum. Those are quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> so next, we actually talked before about how a lot of them have to do with brain. So we kind of like gave you some ones that weren't so informal. These ones certainly are more informal. So you probably could hear them definitely used in different TV series, like we said, but they're ones that you definitely want to be careful if you actually use them. So in the US at least, we use like kind of the suffix brained. So like kind of describing someone's brain, we'd say like bird brained, pea brained, scatter brained, or even hair brained. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, <laughs> that's a lot with brained. So yeah, I suppose, where does bird brained come from? I think like any of these, just their ways to describe that that person, that person's brain, that they have like the brain of a bird, which b birds have very small brains, okay. or hair brained that doesn't come from like hair on your head, but it comes from hair like a rabbit, right? Mm -hmm. It's another yeah. another animal. So both of those kind of mean the same thing that you have like a a small brain, like a small animal, <laughs> or pea brained means like you have a brain that's the size <laughs> of a pea, which a pea is like those small green vegetables. And what does scatter? Do you know what that would mean? Scatter brained. Yeah, this one I think we would use as well in the UK. So this one I mm -hmm. recognized. If you're scatterbrain, it means that you like forget things very easily. You're forgetful. Would it be mm -hmm. the same for you? Yeah, I would think also like maybe you're disorganized or something like that. Like, you know, you're maybe the person who like leaves their phone in the fridge or something is like a little bit scatterbrained. Yeah, we would actually use this as well. I don't know if you do. It'd be interesting to know if you do, but we would actually shorten this to scatty. Scatty. No, that's definitely British. <laughs> yeah. So if someone is scatterbrained, we would describe them as scatty. Yeah. Or we'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm being so scatty today. <laughs> oh, so that's actually a good one, right? Because you can use it for yourself. Yeah. If you know, if you're forgetting things or you're disorganized, yeah, you could even describe yourself as scatty. Mm -hmm. I think the same in the US, you could say, oh, I'm just a bit scatterbrained today. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's actually a lot of these words like that, that you can kind of like use a little bit when you're, I don't know, I don't know if it's the best practice to insult yourself, but uh, sometimes you might find a moment where you feel like it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. So next we have moron. You might call someone, you're such a moron. Yeah. This is very similar, I think, to like saying stupid or dumb dumb in the US, we'd say like you moron. Or if we want to say it as an adjective, we're saying someone is being moronic. Mm -hmm, definitely, yeah. So I, I haven't really heard moronic that much in the UK, but we would mm -hmm. call someone a moron for sure. I've heard that. And maybe another similar one that we have that's probably a bit more British is twit. <laughs> I haven't heard that one before. So how would you use that? This is really funny, actually, because Roald Dahl, the famous author who wrote mm -hmm. Matilda, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, all these great books, he also wrote one called The Twits. And <laughs> it's a children's book, but it's absolutely hilarious. Like I used to read it all the time to some of my classes and mm -hmm. they loved it. And it's it's a, a man and wife. It's um, a husband, a couple, a hu husband and wife. And they are very stupid um, they're also very mean as well in it but the, the book is called the twits <laughs> and it describes them perfectly i think so they are morons they're not very nice people but they're also a little bit dim which is another way to describe it as well i guess yeah. mm -hmm. that was kind of like we said dull right dim mm -hmm. is is kind of a similar similar word to that yeah, if someone's not very bright, they're dim. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So that's definitely a great way for you to remember that one. If you want a British one, just think of Roald Dahl. Yes. We talked about some different ones with brain, right? We also have some ones with head. And there's some expressions that we have as well that we'll have to look at like some American ones and British ones. But um, we might say that someone is soft in the head. Okay. And we might say someone is a bonehead, or we could say like they're boneheaded as an adjective. You could call someone an airhead, 
a pinhead or a knucklehead? Okay, yeah, some of these I've heard of. I haven't heard soft in the head, but it makes <laughs> sense. And all the others I've heard, I think just from TV series and movies, like a bonehead and an airhead, <laughs> like you, you think of like these kind of, you know, these high school movies where it's very stereotypical mm -hmm. and there's always maybe a girl or a guy that's a bit of an airhead they're not very bright and i just picture that when you <laughs> said it it made me think of that i was thinking of it's kind of funny because like bonehead would just i think bonehead's definitely like an insult but airhead could also be like a little bit maybe more like klutz or scatterbrained like those ones that we talked about like i would think of that more that like your head's in the clouds or something we might also say that you're kind of you know Maybe not so present, not so focused or something like that. That makes sense. And are there any of these that you would use or would you use something different? Um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use any of these. They're definitely very American ones. Um, I'm not sure if we have an alternative in the UK to these ones. Maybe not, not for these ones, no. <laughs> so I think these are kind of like interesting too to learn some other words that we have like pinhead. What's a pin? So a pin is like a little sharp metal object. It's usually, mm -hmm. well, you can get different types, but maybe if you're sewing or you're doing something with material, you might use a pin. So it usually has a tiny little ball on the top that, so that mm -hmm. you can use it easily. And then it threads through very nicely, a bit like a needle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a good way to pin something. So then we have knucklehead. Knuckles, uh, what, are, what are knuckles? So your knuckles, if you, if you uh, scrunch your hand up into a ball, so take your hand and just make, make a ball and you make a fist, we say. So those bones there, like if you're boxing or you're punching, your knuckles usually mm -hmm. um, would hit like a punch bag or something. Not a person because we don't like, we don't like violence. <laughs> yeah. But that's what your knuckles are. Exactly. It's very clear if you're watching on YouTube. Yes. If you're listening to this, you can you can just imagine like the bones on the back of your hand. Those yeah. are your your knuckles. And if someone is a knucklehead, then that's a uh, way to say, I guess, that they're the same as like a bonehead, that you don't really have a brain there. It's just all bone. <laughs> oh, so mean. <laughs> so similarly, we could also say like someone is a numbskull. Would you use that? Numbskull. No. Numbskull. So what does numb mean? So if you're numb, it's when you don't have feelings. So sometimes maybe if you've sat in a funny way, you might get what we call <laughs> a dead leg. Do you call it a dead leg? Yeah, we'd say like uh, that your legs fall asleep, ah. but I think we could also say like you have a dead leg. Yeah. And that's when it goes numb and then you have to kind of start moving it again to get the feeling back. Mm -hmm. Or if you're really cold, maybe parts of your body go numb. You could even use it to describe when you are really afraid when you get really scared and maybe you freeze and mm -hmm. you feel numb. That's a great explanation. So if you can imagine the same thing happening to someone's head, that would mean like blood's not getting to their head, right? And they're not really thinking. So it's kind of the same like numbskull, someone who's not thinking very much. Exactly. All right, so we'll look at some ones. I think that the rest of them are a little bit different. So we have two words that we use a lot in the United States to talk about someone who is maybe from outside the city. They're like a rural person, mm -hmm. we would say. And generally, we think these people aren't very educated. Maybe they have like more traditional beliefs or something, you know, they're not so modern or something like that. And we would call someone like this, maybe a hick or a redneck. Mm, okay. So yeah, I've heard, I've heard of these terms but we don't use them in the UK. I guess maybe just because the landscape and the country is maybe a bit different. Obviously, <laughs> we do have countryside, suburbs, all these kinds of things, but maybe the demographic is a little bit different or the idea of it is a bit different in the UK to the US. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like the redneck, that alone, that comes from someone who's working out in the fields all day and their neck would get sunburnt. Mm -hmm. And so it's like their neck would be red, a red neck. So I guess in the UK, since you don't have any sun, <laughs> then you couldn't get a sunburn on your neck. Oh, back to the bad weather again. Can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so both of these kind of mean very similar things. And we'd use it a lot to like refer to someone from the country, but it's not such a nice word. And someone might be very insulted if they actually are that kind of person and you call them a redneck or a hick, then 
that's not going to, they might not take so kindly to that. And what about a hillbilly? Does that have anything to do with it or is that insulting in any way? It Yeah, it's very similar. Um, a hillbilly though, it's, it's like people, I think from a certain region in the United States, it's kind of like the, actually like the Appalachian Mountains, which are on the eastern part of the US. So like someone in the west, you wouldn't really use that word hillbilly. It's kind of like more in the east or something. Okay. Um, but it's kind of similar. It's usually like someone maybe who's they're not very educated and you know, they don't live in the city mm -hmm. or anything like that. Maybe we'd also have another one's kind of similar that we use like white trash or trailer mm -hmm. trash. And this is because like people will live in like motor homes in the US that have been like converted into like a house. And these people, we can't, that's where trailer trash comes from. It's like we think of someone who's, you know, they're not contributing very much to society. They're poor. They're not very educated. And, and generally, maybe they're like using drugs or alcohol or anything like that. And that's kind of like how we'll <laughs> insult those people. Mm -hmm. And I, I suppose it can also be kind of similar to say that someone's not very smart. So those ones are very specific to refer to a very specific type of person. You were talking earlier about maybe a word that's a little bit similar, even though it's not referring to the same demographic. So we do have something similar. The demographic's a bit different, but we would describe someone as a chav or even say that someone is chavy. Again, this is probably to do with someone that's not very intelligent, maybe again, like you described, doesn't offer much to society or isn't even really trying. And yeah, they kind of don't make great decisions or, you know, try to better themselves or do anything in, in any way. So they're, they're not very intelligent. And they also maybe dress a certain way. Sometimes you would describe someone as a chav, maybe if they kind of, they're not very well put together or don't even make an effort with the kinds of things that they are wearing as well. Yeah. And I think this is a super British thing because like these people tend to dress in such a specific way and everything is like, you can just identify them by seeing them maybe. And uh, yeah. I think in the US we don't, it's probably similar to some of these words, but we don't have like an exact equivalent of it. Yeah. Like for example, they might like be wearing loads of different brands. So you can see that they're like trainers at Adidas and then they're wearing like Puma tracksuit bottoms or <laughs> joggers, maybe you would say, and then like a t-shirt emblazoned with another brand and then something else. And, and then like this um, one thing that was quite typical was like a cap, like a fake Burberry cap. So Burberry is a designer brand that has like this check that's very specific to the brand and you can find fake knockoffs very easily and stuff and you would mm -hmm. often see maybe chavs wearing something like this as well and you said that they wear like a, a jumper or something that's emblazoned mm. with something what does that mean that it's emblazoned so it's printed on the front so you know sometimes you mm -hmm. get these brands that have their their slogan or their logo just their branding on the t-shirt but you know it's very mm -hmm. very brash and big and obvious in your face. Exactly, yeah. So that's a really great one, I think, to know. I think you have to know that if you go to the UK, because it's something that you'll see, I think, even even in, in Spain, when I lived in Mallorca, there's like some places that I think are quite frequented by chavs, yeah. by this type of people. It's kind of like the places that they like to go on vacation. So that's actually where I learned this word, because I was with a British friend, and they were, they were saying like, oh, this place is full of chavs. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes sense. So... That's a really great one. And now we have like a couple of great expressions. You can let me know if there's any ones of these that you would use um, in the UK or if you have some similar one. So we might say that someone's not the sharpest tool in the shed. Do you mm -hmm. know what that means? Yeah, we have this expression. It's slightly different. We would say mm -hmm. not the sharpest tool in the box. Okay. Like, cause so, you have a toolbox. That makes perfect sense. So a shed, what is a shed? So a shed is maybe if you have a garden, you'll have like mm -hmm. a, a little hut, like usually made of wood maybe or, or something like this. And you keep your tools in there and maybe a lawnmower and you can use it to store other things as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So basically it makes sense, right? That you, it, we might say also like someone's sharp, right? We didn't talk about that. Like that's another way to say that you're smart is that you're sharp. So if you're not sharp, then you're not very smart. So that's kind of like a colorful way of describing that, that he or she's not the sharpest tool in the shed. 
Yeah, and I can just imagine someone very British saying this and like <laughs> saying it in a way to not be too insulting, but they might describe someone this way, yeah, without calling them one of the other kind of more harsh words. Mm -hmm. This one's not so bad, yeah. Yeah. And we might say something is half-baked. Have you ever heard that term? No, what does that mean? A half-baked means like it's not fully thought through, which would obviously oh. kind of like mean also that maybe it's not so smart, it's not so intelligently done. And we might say like a lot, for example, the collocation, like a half-baked idea. It's an idea that wasn't thought through so much. So this might be kind of like a more casual colloquial way that you could say that something's more short-sighted. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't know that one. So like you haven't cooked it all the way is what that comes from. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, we have some ones. I think that these are also going to be very American, but let me know. Uh, we might say, I think especially with like kids, we'd use this. We call someone like a turkey or a goofball. Have you ever heard that? Oh, I've heard goofball. I haven't heard of calling <laughs> someone a turkey though. So it means like the same thing. It's kind of like, maybe it's not stupid so much, but I mean, it goes hand in hand because it's kind of like if someone's foolish, uh, but it's kind of like you're being silly, right? You're, oh. you're not acting in such like a proper etiquette or like smart way, maybe you're being, uh, so you might think like, for example, from Disney, there's like the, the dog character that's like Mickey Mouse's friend, his name in English is Goofy. Yes. And sometimes okay. people with the teeth as well are described as Goofy, aren't they? Because he, he kind of has the teeth that come out a little bit. Really? Yeah. Well, we do in the UK. I, haven't, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't heard that description before, no. But that makes sense, yeah. And I, I have heard goofball, but we don't use it in the UK. I think an alternative for us would maybe be something like a burk. A burk. <laughs> it's a really, I haven't heard this one. It's a really funny word. Um, yeah, so it's usually like you'd use it with friends, you know, if someone's being really silly and, or like they just say something really dumb, really, really stupid, <laughs> you might be like, what are you talking about, you burk? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think in kind of like a similar way, right? These are pretty light ones. Yeah. Would, would you use that also like with kids? Mm. I mean, you probably wouldn't call a kid this, but uh, maybe kids would like use it with each other. Yeah, maybe kids would use it with each other. They might also use the word div. Like you might say, div. yeah, you're being a div. Stop being a div. <laughs> and again, it just means this kind of thing. Like stop being stupid or a divvy. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're such a divvy. <laughs> <laughs> so they're very very different ones for these ones yeah, that the kids would use right definitely so i think we'll we'll probably wrap it up there right because i think that these are probably of more than enough words to be able to understand if you're watching the media if you're watching a tv series or if you are joking around with your friends definitely there's so many i can't believe like how many there actually are and there's even more than this so it just goes to show you that it is an interesting topic and we'll teach you a few more over on our instagram as always so if you want to learn a few more fun words like this then head over to at reallife.english on instagram and you'll learn it there if you are listening to this, we are starting to publish these also on YouTube. So you can actually see us. So you can see Andrea and I, you can join us. You can grab a cup of coffee or tea and join our conversation. And if you are watching this, then a really great way to continue your learning is by going and listening to our podcast, subscribing on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever else that you're listening to podcasts. And this can be a super convenient way to take your learning with you anywhere when you're in line at the supermarket, when you are waiting in the doctor's office, when you're walking your dog, and there's so many more ideas like this. So definitely be sure to subscribe and you can watch us and listen to us and we will love to see you over there. So that said, as always, thanks for joining us here on the Real Life English Podcast. One, two, three. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Don't be a stranger. You can find all the notes like vocabulary, links, and more for this lesson on our blog at reallifeglobal.com. And connect with us and on Instagram at reallife.english for even more fun English recommendations. Do you want to continue your learning and get confident, fluent English? Then I have a couple great recommendations for you. First of all, check out our YouTube channel, Learn English with TV series, where you can have fun learning to understand fast speaking natives with your favorite movies, 
series, and more without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Second, if you like our podcast, then our real life native immersion course is perfect for you. It is the next best thing to studying abroad in an English speaking country. Try it for free with our three part power learning series. Just go to reallifeglobal.com slash pod to sign up. Finally, if you are enjoying our podcast, then please assist us in helping more people go beyond the classroom and live their English. You can do this by sending a link to this podcast to a friend or by leaving us a five star review wherever you are listening. We might even shout you out on the podcast. Stay healthy and safe, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Aw, yeah.